Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about the uh, the brief pause there. Just shuffling a few things around behind the scenes. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, which I think in this case would be decidedly Jeremy. Um, so before we get into tonight's first adventure, one which uh, I will be calling the West Marster Frog Show, an absolute mouthful, uh, we are going to, as always, introduce, uh, get to know all of our brave heroes that will be adventuring today. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, the first character that we have here that's going to be uh, adventuring tonight is Othgarot Chirirgrix. Uh, or Chirirgix, I'm sorry. I, I added in an extra R out of nowhere. So Othgarot, how are you this evening? I am quite well. I have been doing much self-thinking lately. Uh, self-thinking. Uh, would you care to elaborate on that? For one thing, I guess my first question is, what is self, self-thinking? I have been thinking about the nature of myself and my place here, and my place in the eternal hunt. Have you come to any conclusions? I believe I have a better understanding of my anger. Hmm. Um, really? And, and what have you, um, what does that mean for you? Do you think that, um, is that something that you've conquered? Do you think you've removed your anger or have you refined it? Is, is it have some new kind of purpose to it? I have greatly misunderstood why certain things have bothered me, which have led me to this point. I have greatly misunderstood my hatred of the destruction of crafted goods? Yes, thank you. Um, so is, I mean, I assume that that's still a, a thorn in your side. It is, but it is only a splinter of much greater thorn. And what is that new thorn that you've discovered? It is the, what is uh, like to put in trash people that are good to put in trash things that are useful, to cut corners and find shortcut when hard work reach better goal. Um, it seems like you've uh, it seems like you've had a bit of a if anything a spiritual awakening. Um, I look forward to seeing how this kind of new uh, Ogrert function and and how this uh, affects you in your adventure uh, in your adventuring career. I look forward to seeing how I can push forward beyond this. Um, indeed, as do I. Well, for now, welcome, Othgarot. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, very good. Uh, up next, we have uh, another returning character. Uh, after a recent uh, first-time adventure, um, we have returning uh, Lumine Darkmoon. Uh, Lumine, how are you? I just had a nightmare about a bird. Oh, jeez. A nightmare about a bird. Was it, um, perchance, the head of a giant eagle? Something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happened in this nightmare? What was it that shook you so? Uh, you don't seem like someone who would be easily frightened. Well, actually, I wasn't frightened at all. Everyone was the best. Oh, God, <laughs> Jeremy. Or Pete, sorry. <laughs> Um, that is, you know, we'll let it slide this time. Um, so you're saying that you enjoy nightmares? They're what I thrive on. Now, I have a question for you. If you have a nightmare, but you really like it and, and you enjoy the nightmare, is it still considered a nightmare? Is it, or is it just saying it's just a good dream that anyone else would call a nightmare? I would call it a dream, but it's still a nightmare, so I refer to it as a nightmare. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and I think it is true that nightmares are objectively nightmares, um, which is uh, something that we may see someday in the plane of, uh, in the plane of dreams. Now, um, Lumai, is there anything else you would like to say to the, uh, to the good people of the world uh, before you head out onto your adventure? Good people. There are none. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Lumine, uh, sorry, Lumine, welcome back. Thank you. 
Um, coming up next, uh, we have all returning uh, heroes in this uh, story tier adventure time. We have Isaac back once more. Isaac, how are you? Hello, I'm wonderful. <laughs> As always, such enthusiasm, Isaac. Um, what is the source of your good cheer? How do you always say uh, and stay so happy? The light of the machina, of course. I mean, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that it would be the machina that gives you this cheer. Um, is cheer part of uh, is cheer part of the machina's doctrine, or is it just a side effect? It's a side effect, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, Isaac, what else? Uh, what else is new? What have you been up to since last you adventured? Well, I have been I have been evangelizing, and at the request of multiple people, I have a, I have ended my attempts to evangelize children. <laughs> um, yes, I, I do believe the last time uh, the last time you adventured, you did try and convert uh, essentially a baby to the machina. <laughs> So is uh, that's something that you have given up now from this point moving forward? I have, indeed. <laughs> All right. Uh, for better or worse, uh, it seems like you've, uh, it seems at least like you're confident in the decision. Uh, I, <laughs> I can say that I probably think that it was a good one, Isaac. Um, either way, welcome back, and it's good to have you adventuring once more. Thank you. Uh, and last but not least, we have another returning, a very veteran player, but a returning character, uh, Lord Snooty McTootington. How are you, Lord Snooty? That is Lord Snooty McTootington the third. Um, my, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, uh, Lord McTootington. My great grandfather um, would not approve. Um, my question for you is. Um, if I'm to say your name, Lord Snooty McTootington the Third, would you prefer Lord McTootington or Lord Snooty McTootington the Third or Lord Snooty or Lord Snooty the Third? What's your well, just for I regular could conversation? Well, I could have you say my entire name, but that would be far too long. Uh, for now, you may refer to me as Lord Snootington the Third. Lord Snootington? Yes. Very well. Um, is are, is the McTudington, the McTudington family um, very into portmanteau? That is correct. It has been passed down through our line for generations. <laughs> I suspected there might be some uh, some generational passing with, with Lord Snooty. Um, and is there anything else uh, about the McTudington, uh, the McTudington family that you could tell us about? Uh, what are the McTudingtons most known for, for example? Well, we are a family of nobles who own a lot of land, and soon, with this book, he takes the book out of his bag and pats it a couple of times, we shall own even more! Uh, what, is the, uh, what is the name of the book? The Book of Great Deeds. Uh, very interesting. I mean, oh yes, I forgot that you had recently obtained the, uh, the Book of Great Deeds. Hopefully you can find some... Uh some excellent properties to obtain. Uh, although I don't know if, uh, I don't know if tonight will be this place as you are heading to the, uh, the Baradak Swamp, as it were. Um, for those of you unaware, the Baradak is a fairly harsh swamp uh, in the land of D&D &D time. It's filled with um, giant frogs of all different uh, shapes and sizes, huge massive trees, giant mushrooms uh, that give off all kinds of different strange spores. It's a, it's one of the more dangerous environments in the land of D&D time. I um, see. But, I may have to get my special book for that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there may not be, uh, I'm just thinking there may not be any properties worthy of the, the McTudington name there, at least none that aren't very heavily magically protected. True. Um, so, uh, where we begin uh, and the reason for your summons, of course, to the Baradak Swamp was uh, an event known as the West, uh, the West Marster Frog Show. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with it, but it is one of the more prestigious events uh, within the land of D&D &D time. It is a time for all of the various bullywugs and grung that uh, rule the swamp in their different factions, come together very much like the Olympics of the Baradak Swamp, so to speak. However, instead of uh, athletic events, uh, various frog trainers bring their most prized and beautifully and, and perfectly breeded frogs and, well, just kind of show them off. Uh, tons of different 
you know, creatures gather and watch. Um, enthusiasts of all kinds, uh, you know, Bartholomew has said that he personally will just be attending as a guest. Um, but you have been hired on as uh, extra security. Apparently at today's event, um, there have been some murmurings of an unsavory contestant that has uh, entered. Um, someone with plans and a bit of a vendetta against the West Marster Frog show. Um, they haven't quite been able to, to weed them out and they're not sure everyone seems pretty legit on the listing. Um, so they've brought in some of Bartholomew's most prized adventurers to sort of case the place and make sure that the show runs and operates smoothly. Um, and that is where today's uh, adventure begins. Um, Bartholomew uh, has teleported you, of course, as he does all adventures at the beginning of quests. He's brought you to uh, a swimming circle not far from the West Marshland uh, Arena, which is a very kind of tall and rounded out, um, a rounded out building constructed of, you know, old kind of downed trees, the woods rotting out in places, but um, the area is is very much a buzz. Um, you can see tons of people that are walking around, uh, and I say people, but they seem to be mostly humanoid and frog hybrids. Um, and all of them have, uh, or not all of them, but many of them have larger or larger frogs on leashes. Some of them are walking around with small containers containing frogs, um, but you see bullywogs, you see grung, um, you see a few people leashing around uh, bander hobs, even some of the uh, larger, uh, some of the larger frog-like denizens of the swamp. Uh, toads as well, it's not entirely just frogs. Um, and everyone is just kind of funneling uh, slowly into the open arena uh, where everyone uh, appears to be gathering for the show. Um, you know that your contact, um, your contact, one of the administrators for the uh, Westmarster Dog, uh, Westmarster Frog Show, uh, is somewhere within. Um, so that is where we begin. What would you all like to do? Mick Tudington is grumbling to himself. Uh, mostly about how irate he is that someone would interrupt such a pr such a prestigious event. Yes, indeed. Um, what about uh, what about everyone else? What else was uh, what else is going on? Are these frog sentient, by chance? Um, yes, um, most of them actually appear to be. I mean, there's there's a bit of a mix. Um, you see some of the uh, frogs walking around. Uh, they walk on two legs. They wear. Um, You've seen uh, what are referred to as bullywugs uh, and grung before. Grung being these very small frogs. They look almost like poison dart frogs um, that wear, um, you know, they wear clothes. They can jump extremely high. And then bullywugs are a little bit more human sized, but, you know, all of them are just dressed in the absolute uh, finest of clothes uh, that one could expect a frog to wear. Uh, if you've ever seen them before, they usually are wearing just kind of like um, scraps uh, and just like woven together plants, things along those lines. Uh, but the finery is truly out. Uh, this actually seems, for the Baradak, uh, a very fancy affair that you're kind of walking into. Um, over kind of as you're moving forward and entering into the uh, entering into the arena proper, uh, there's actually a band of uh, there's actually a band of bullywugs that are playing very. Um, they look kind of cobbled together stringed instruments, um, but they're playing some very nice, sort of very posh music uh, as you're kind of walking into the space. I can appreciate this. I will look around. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, go ahead and make me uh, in just a perception check as you're kind of taking in the scene. Wonderful. All right, yeah, as you kind of scope out the area, um, you're actually fairly impressed. Um, you're fairly impressed with the, despite the kind of, uh, despite the environment, uh, the quality of the production that they put on here. Um, for one thing, you notice a lot of the smell of that like murky and mire that is within the swamp is dampened. Uh, there's a lot of like kind of perfume being sprayed in the area. It's all very, uh, it's all very posh. Uh, you notice uh, a judge's table with four seats, which is currently empty. Um, you can see uh, a number of people are just kind of doing some practices, warming up their various frogs. Uh, there's giant toads. And you can also see um, registration, where there are a number of people kind of taking names, getting everyone's kind of applications in. Uh, and this presumably where you will meet up with uh, any administrator that might kind of get you into your assigned locations. I see. Um, if there is an administrator nearby, I would like to ask them about if there have been any last-minute contestants or anyone who has recently applied for this 
show. Um, all right. Uh, is everyone going to kind of hop over to the, um, uh, is everyone going to move over to the registration table? Uh, yes. Or does anyone else have anything else they would like to do? Okay. Um, yes, I shall go along. All right. Uh, so you all kind of move in this direction, uh, and you see there's a, uh, a bullywog with like a big top hat and monocle that's there kind of like taking down names. Um, you see a grung that's there, you know, turning in. Uh, the grung is fairly small and they have like an even smaller kind of case with a small poison dart frog, it looks like in it. Uh, and they go up and just, uh, they're in front of you in line. This is Ribbit. I'm going to be entering them in today's competition, my good sir. Uh, and, you know, he takes down the name, uh, writes it down. Uh, yes, Ribbit, uh, very creative, uh, kind of circles it, and your name, uh, and it's a little bit hard to even, like, kind of make out what a lot of these grung are saying as they speak, because they have such kind of thick accents, um, and was, yes, uh, that was, uh, Fruit and Carmen, yes, uh, very good, uh, and he, um, you know, takes this person, and then as you all kind of approach, uh, yes, how may I help you today? Uh, I look to the others to see if I, any of them would like to start first. Hello! We are here to, um, <laughs> we have been invited here by the throwers of this festival to set out some bad eggs in the ranks. Ah, oh, very good. You are here on be you are here on behalf of Bartholomew's Adventuring Guild. Is this correct? That is correct. Yes. And hmm. this is wonderful news. We've been waiting for your arrival um, with uh, much expectancy. So, if you would uh, follow me. Uh, and he begins kind of walking, uh, he kind of gestures to another frog to hop in and take his place at the counter. Um, so as you've already been made aware, there is some potential for foul play that we're concerned about. We've received a few late minute uh, applicants, uh, some of them being losers from previous, previous years that were a bit disgruntled. Uh, we are... Uh, yes, you see, in previous years, they have entered frogs that have been disqualified um, for various reasons, including uh, magical enhancements. Um, Steroids. Uh, of a sort, I suppose. Uh, although, uh, but, uh, but my apologies. Uh, although we cannot say for certain that that is exactly what it was, we knew that the frogs were uh, no good. Um, so we'll need you to be investigating to make sure that, um, well, they don't get up to too much trouble. Uh, there are two contestants in particularly that we are concerned about. Um, there is a uh, Glonda, she is a, uh, a hag of sorts, who is entering a giant toad. And then there is a uh, another bollywog such as myself uh, who will be entering a giant frog into the competition. Uh, we would like you to take a keen eye on these two. Hmm. All right. Do you know where we could find them? Um, well, they will be uh, out on the competition floor. Um, so what we'll need you to do is... Um, masquerade as contestants in the competition in order to stay out on the floor and observe them closely. Is this is this within your uh, possibility of uh, achieving this? Yes, I believe so. What do you all say? I am no... Um, I do not look like a frog. This ah, will yes. be difficult. I am aware of this, uh, so we will provide for you a costume, uh, so to speak. A costume? Uh, for two of you. Two of you will need to be handlers, and two of you we can disguise as frogs. I am not a... I, I will would certainly... be most amenable to be disguised. I am a handler. I would certainly never stoop to such a position as to pretend to be a frog. I am fine with this. 
Okay. Uh, and he hands to, in that case, Isaac and uh, in Othgerud, uh, he hands each of you uh, a small kind of collar. Um, he says, if each of you would be so kind as to place these on, we can get things started immediately. I would place the collar upon my neck. Um, very good. Uh, and you watch as Isaac does so. Um, you watch as the metal kind of like bubbles and turns into kind of green flesh. Uh, and he kind of hunches over on all fours and takes on the visage of a very large frog. Um, you've been polymorphed into a giant frog while you're wearing this collar. Blessings of the Machina! Uh, and as he says that, what you all hear is... Raw, Perfect. This reminds me very eerily of collars given by white robe people after much time they have spent with my tribe. But I shall put this on for <laughs> greater good. Um, very brave of Gerard. As you place it upon, you also feel your body shift and transform until you are uh, also a giant frog. Uh, and both you, uh, Lumine and Snooty, uh, are kind of given... Um, just short kind of leashes on which to kind of uh, walk them about the event, uh, and he continued to speak. Yes, so you will need to walk around this event and participate in it. Um, the judges, of course, are neutral parties, and they will not be aware of the additional security, so we will need you to uh, pass the uh, at least the first and second uh, trials. The, the winner will not be as important, sirs. Understandable. All right. Uh, the, the collars are manufactured so that your appearances will be perfect. So that should be fine. Just don't do anything too unfrog like, he, he says to the two of you who've been turned into frogs. I have a question. Grab <laughs> it. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just comes out as ribbit. Um, but that ribbit, he does actually understand because he speaks frog. Uh, and so as you're saying, uh, you, you, he hears the I have a question. Yes, sir, what do you need? What if we were to inadvertently win? He kind of looks troubled for a second. Good idea, Isaac. <laughs> uh, he, he looks troubled. Um... I would prefer it if you did not do that. And if you do, please keep it a secret for all time. That you are not- Entirely understandable. Uh, very good. In that case, um, if you would all uh, move over to the preparation area for the event. Yes, of course. What things of the market at to you? I will, I will take the leash of one of them and lead him like a gentleman. I will take Isaac's leash and drag him and choke him. Oh, how strongly you pull me! Um, all right, you as you're kind of moving them along. Um, yeah, he's being a little bit. Uh, Lumine's being a, a little bit too rough uh, as you continue forward. Uh, but you all move out into kind of the stage, uh, the show, and things are slowly sort of. Things are slowly kind of quieting down uh, amidst the swamp as all of the frogs are being assembled. Uh, and you can see they're largely kind of uh, placed by size um, and there's all sorts of different ones. And the uh, festival kind of, uh, the event kind of begins uh, and you hear um, a man with a microphone kind of comes out. He appears to be uh, a grung um, and he has very kind of like nice uh, white kind of uh, hair actually on his head that's kind of puffed, quaffed backwards, and he's holding some kind of uh, voice amplification uh, device that he holds up, and his voice is, is surprisingly uh, sonorous, considering that he is a grunt. Uh, and he speaks up, Welcome, all of you, to the Westmarster Frog Show. Uh, and there's very polite applause. Um, without further ado, allow us to introduce our judges for today's event. Uh, and um, you see there's the band kind of plays like a big sort of fanfare and you see walking over on the side of the room um a few uh fairly recognizable figures uh throughout the land of dnd time um you see first with a wave uh the chef romancer clinton slaughter murder walks in and, and he kind of looks around and waves and and nods approvingly to some people um you see 
um, an old kind of hag that's covered in mushrooms um, who, who kind of walks in and there's, you know, some scattered applause. Uh, and then you see uproarious applause from the Bullywugs and then the uh, Grung, respectively, as in walks uh, the Emperor Julius Frogston of the Bullywugs and the Pharaoh uh, Frogenhoppen of the Grung, who all just, yes, it's good to see you all. And then the, the Grung Pharaoh just, we're going to win the dog show, the frog show. Uh, and he just kind of like jumps in and they all take their seats. Uh, and there's, you know, just very, uh, it's it's uproarious, but polite at the same time as they enter. Uh, and very good. And without further ado, allow us to start with the first round of competition. Uh, we will be judging the appearance and breeding of the frogs. Uh, and everyone kind of you know, takes their seats as all the judges are there. Uh, and slowly but surely they start announcing different kind of categories of frogs that they're moving through. Uh, to begin with, the tree frogs. Uh, and you watch as judges are kind of going down the line uh, and kind of examining each of the frogs in turn. Um, they kind of do like a little walk around the outside of the arena and then kind of get back to, uh, get back to the start. Um, they go through several categories. Um, they mention, the poison dart frogs, the dwarf frogs, the fire-bellied toads, uh, and eventually um, they get to the true frogs, uh, which is the line that all of you are in. Uh, and it gets to first, you know, a lot of the smaller frogs are going first, where it's just like frogs that are able to fit in people's hands. And they have kind of like a smaller little arena for the smaller ones uh, in the center. That's just like on a table for the frogs to kind of walk around. Um, but then it gets to um, the four of you. So the first in line in this case is actually going to be uh, Isaac, as well as, uh, it's going to be Isaac, as well as Lumine. Um, so you are kind of the next in line, and would you care to, uh, how do you kind of go about your walk about I'm, the... Uh... I'm just smiling. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I have no, <laughs> I apologize. I'm just smiling and being friendly to the judges. All right. Um, you begin kind of your walk around. Are you are you kind of continuing to like yank on the leash pretty tightly or are you taking it a little bit easier now that you're in the uh, public eye? No, once I entered the arena, I kind of let loose a little. Okay, okay. And and what about uh, what about you, Isaac? How do you go around the arena? Are, are you doing your best to just imitate the frog or? Very clumsily, yes. I have not been a frog before, sadly. All right, yeah, so you're kind of like less hopping around the arena, and there's almost like kind of an awkward like waddle walk. Uh, go ahead and make me, uh, uh, both of you make me performance checks as you're kind of getting around this uh, chunk of the arena. Not too great. Um, as you're moving, um, as you're moving, there's a few kind of people that, like, in the audience are, like, murmuring and a little bit confused about how um, how this frog kind of got in without this perfect walk all, uh, all kind of set up, and you get over around to, um, you get over around to the little uh, kind of pedestal where, the, in front of the judges, where they can examine you closely. Um, they all step up uh, and are kind of looking you over. Um, Julius Frogs and these during such perfect scenification. This is an absolutely glorious glass of coat on the outside of this big, beautiful kind frog. <laughs> uh, and uh, Froggenhoppen um, kind of looks at you and just, it's a bit suspicious, however, that the frog couldn't walk, but it's such a beautiful frog. Uh, I am disabled. To be... <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I am disabled. <laughs> um, he responds, stabbed on a nail. Um, and Frog and Hopper, disabled frog. Uh, go ahead and make me a deception check, uh, and I'll give you advantage uh, because of. Um, <laughs> I'll give you advantage because of blue mine. Um, and he says, I admire your courage in coming out and showing. Good job. What an incredible frog! Uh, and uh, you see Frogston, I can curify. This is one of the greatest frogifiers I've ever seen. Uh, 
Uh, and you. you guys, uh, you guys kind of continue off, uh, leaving the next in line. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of uh, applause. There's a lot of kind of, um, there, there's a, seems to be like some extra applause for uh, the part where they praised you for your courage and coming in, uh, despite being a uh, a frog overcoming a recent injury. Uh, Lumine is ecstatic. Yes. <laughs> uh, of the yes. In that case, it is now Snooty and Oathgerert. Um, How do you proceed? You bet your tail that I will be walking out as proudly as I can. My shiny signet ring for all to see. Um, I'm going to give you, Snooty, uh, since this is so very much in your wheelhouse, looking uh, wealthy and, and kind of fine as you walk around with a frog. I'm going to give you advantage on your performance check. Uh, and you, uh, Oedgarut, what's your frog movement strategy look like? I'm trying to hop I am, or... I am not an expert on frogs, but I know they jump well. So I shall also try to jump well as I move forward. Um, very good. Uh, go ahead and um, I'm going to actually let you, because you're more kind of relying on your, your physical prowess, I'll let you make an athletics check, uh, but you're going to be using, you have your proficiency if you have it, uh, and obviously Snooty make me a performance check. Um, I just did. 17! Let me give you a giant frog to make an athletics check with. Um, <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, so, Isaac... And uh, just one second. All right. So Isaac and Odgar, you should now have, uh, you should now have a giant frog on your character sheet that you couldn't control. <laughs> um, but yeah, that roll of seventeen is certainly enough. So yeah, you guys look absolutely. Uh, amazing as you're moving around. Snooty, you look like you've been doing this for years, uh, and your frog hops are impressive. It, it seems like uh, almost a little bit too show-offish at point, where you're jumping like a little bit extra high, but the crowd seems to like it. Frog handling uh, has been passed out to my family for generations. Um, very good. And, and as it gets back to the... <laughs> uh, as it gets back to the pedestal, um, they, uh, they, you kind of like hop onto it, and this time the judges just they look over a perfect code and a perfect performification <laughs> you've proven yourselves a wonderful frog owner and frog <laughs> uh and uh you watch his frog and hop <laughs> uh, he, he kind of like tips his hat to you as you speak the uh, as you speak his language uh and next uh, will give a nice bow <laughs> Yeah, uh, frog and hoppin' kind of goes, the great frogsmanship, uh, and <laughs> you uh, you continue out. You don't even have to sell them; they're completely sold on you guys. Um, so you get through, uh, and they go through, and they pick out a number of frogs from each kind of section. Um, you watch um, at some point during this first round, um, and actually it's in the next categories, they get through toads, um, the hag that you've been kind of keeping an eye upon. Um, the the one that was running just the, uh, just running the uh, the poison dart frog, the, uh, the bullywug, um, he kind of proceeded through without any issue. Uh, but the other one, the hag that you were watching, you see it as she gets to the arena, the judges kind of look her frog up and down for quite a while, um, and, you watch as Clinton Slaughter Murder kind of walks up to the frog and just says, wait a, uh, wait a moment. Uh, and you see he just casts a, a brief kind of dispel magic on the frog and uh, you see it transform uh, before your eyes into um, kind of this big, like the coat changes on it completely. So it looks absolutely nothing like um, the frog that it was. It, it actually appears to be like a bright orange when it was being entered as like this perfect toad. Uh, and it's very like wiry and muscular, um, certainly not uh, of the breed. And you watch as that hag is actually disqualified, which means you're down to just uh, looking after one, uh, one Bollywog, uh, oh, who I made a yeah. mistake for. He's, uh, he's actually in the same category as you. He had also entered a, uh, a giant frog. Um, so, um, you both, um, all of you are chosen, including that Bullywog, for the next round as they pick out, like, a whole bunch of frogs from the pack. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so it goes through to the next leg of the competition. You watch as the smaller frogs again are kind of put on the little table and, and made to like bounce through what looks like uh, a small obstacle course alongside of their owners. Uh, and then a much larger one is sort of built up around it. Um, and it seems to be a test for both owner and uh, it seems to be a test for both owner and frog. Like there's a, an underwater section uh, where it shows all of the like Bullywug trainers and all of the Grung trainers who are very accustomed to the water are able to swim through it amphibiously without any issue. Um, and uh, it gets to once again in this obstacle course section, um, the group of you again. Uh, so first up as before, uh, it shall be, <laughs> uh, it shall be Isaac as well as Lumine. Um, so, you take off before you. Uh, in front of you, the first obstacle that kind of uh, comes to your path uh, is an extremely high wall um, that is meant to kind of like test jumping height. Um, so, uh, you get to it. Um, how do you proceed? It, it looks like um, there's like a few different uh, there are a few different like lines of heights to kind of judge like how high you're actually able to get But if you're not able to get high enough and it still allows you to go through so you can like aim for one of the highest ones If you want or you can just aim for like a more reasonable one in the middle. There's been a mix of people doing both uh, What do you uh, what are the two of you want to do? How long is my tongue? Um, you've been kind of like testing it out a little bit. Um, you can get a solid five feet out I shall attempt to leap and project my tongue over the top. <laughs> so you're gonna like go over one of the lower bars, but have your tongue like pull you over like the highest one? Is that the idea? Indeed. All right. Yeah, Isaac. <laughs> um, are you are you gonna try and do anything to like uh, boost this or help him out, Lumine? Or are you just gonna kind of uh, you're just gonna kind of watch at this point? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna flick him up. I'm gonna try to like with the uh, with the with leash. leash a bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and make me uh, an athletics check as a giant frog, uh, and I will give you uh, advantage. Actually, I'm gonna actually call this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually gonna give you uh, acrobatics here. Uh, so uh, go ahead and make me an acrobatics check, uh, and you have a plus one from your frog dexterity. Just need to find the, um, <laughs> this is a very, um, I'm not used to these kinds of characters, right? <laughs> That's no problem. <laughs> uh, you can just make it on your character sheet, uh, and we'll just add the plus one. We'll just change the bonuses. Uh, very well. Um, all right, uh, so that's a 16, uh, would be a plus one, so that's a 17 total. Yeah, you uh, leap upwards, uh, and as you get closer to the top, the tongue kind of extends out and coils around, and you kind of fling yourself along with the boost from the leash, uh, and um, you watch as the leash that you're given kind of extends like they were made for this, uh, and uh, you flop over the other side, and there's some kind of scattered applause, uh, and the way the obstacle course is kind of set up, multiple uh, multiple frogs kind of run through it once. Uh, so you are kind of right behind them as you're moving through the events. Um, what do you, uh, what do the two of you do uh, as you get to this next ring? Uh, Snooty and Chariot Kicks. Well, <clears throat> Snooty will crack most of the mo uh, bones in his body and uh, prepare to uh, uh, go for, uh, basically I am uh, standing in front of the, uh, wall and getting ready to, like, lift, push, uh, the frog up. <laughs> okay, so you're doing kind of like a, you're kind of doing leapfrog where it lands on your back and then you, like, just throw them upwards into the air. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, uh, Othgur, any extra strategy that you want to employ? Jump as high as you can! <laughs> We're a bit. Uh, um, no. All right. Uh, I will just go along with yeah, this. Yeah, you just you just go for it. Uh, go ahead and make me another athletics check. Sixteen. Uh, I'm sorry, that was with advantage. So you can roll again. Oh, uh, with advantage. Um, uh, let me just. Twenty-four. Wow. Oh my god. Um, actually, no. I'm sorry. It wasn't supposed to be you. It was supposed to be. 
I thought that was a. Uh, since you're helping, um, it's mostly the frog that's doing the work here, but oh, it's okay. still a 20. Um, so you uh, you lift off the ground incredibly high, pushed even higher up still um, by, uh, pushed even higher up still by Lord Snooty, uh, and you cascade and like flip up over the top bar uh, and land gracefully onto the other side, or about as graceful as a frog can look, uh, as you clear even above the top bar. Uh, with your uh, with your thing, and there's definitely a, a smattering of applause uh, that appears, which is always polite, but so any applause is uh, kind of like a standing ovation almost, um, as you kind of uh, continue your way through the course. You, uh, the next two groups of you, um, uh, you both get to the uh, you both get to the next section, which is sort of this like underwater, um, this underwater obstacle course with rings that's kind of meant to test uh, your swimming ability uh, as you start to move through. Um, I would like you to make me just like an acrobatics check uh, as you're kind of going through these hoops. Uh, and this is actually going to be both, um, this is going to actually be both Lumine and, uh, it's gonna be both Lumine and Isaac uh, in this situation, as you both have to swim through because the leash has to follow through the through the hoops. Acrobatics? As a Yonti, yep. do I get advantage? Because um, my acrobatics is very have... bad, I shall give a uh, prayer. Uh, do you have Canada. a... Okay, do you have a swimming speed as a Yonti? Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. So... Um... Uh, I would say no. I think you actually have disadvantage on this because you can't swim in particularly well like most of the other competitors. Like the frog has a flat roll to go through it, um, yeah. but this would be a situation where the water kind of messes you up. You're not used to moving around uh, underwater. Um, all right, so 13 and oof. Um, yeah, as, as you're going through, uh, as you're going through Isaac to this point, you kind of. Um, uh, you bump into a couple of the rings. They're kind of uh, suspended by strings underwater that keep them from moving too round or much, around too much. Uh, but you like bump into a couple of them. One of them you just kind of end up going around and you don't want to go back because that will look worse. So you just kind of miss a ring. Um, you're not used to swimming too much. Uh, and there's a couple of like disapproving sort of, um, sort of a couple disapproving uh, from the audience. Uh, Lumine, you're moving through them actually pretty efficiently, um, but it's the kind of two of you together. Uh, since the focus is on the frog, it, it doesn't quite make up for it as much. Um, Isaac's an and, idiot. <laughs> uh, and that's going to bring us to uh, Chereer Gix and Snooty. Uh, any ring acrobatics! strategy? Acrobatics! Yeah, make me some acrobatics. Oh, you show off everything. and but, uh, You have disadvantage, though, as you don't have the uh, swim speed. It does not matter. It does, it does not matter. I have a uh, small plan. All right, what do you want to do? I shall use my tongue to grab onto the leash to give me more leverage to pull him behind me as I swim. Which is probably why I got that um, 19. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Um, all right, cool. Um, so yeah, go ahead and make me an acrobatics check. Uh, and because he's swimming so well and you have him as an anchor point, uh, I will give you advantage on this. Which is good, because once again, you guys crush it as you move through this thing. Uh, it's sleek. Um, it's almost like one fluid motion as you just weave back and forth through the water. Uh, as you get to the final, um, and both of you can answer this at the same time, as you get to the final section, which is freestyle. Uh, what do you guys do in the freestyle sections? Let down the bars. I will be hefting the frog above my head and flexing. <laughs> I'll be throwing a frog in the air as I- You're not realizing I am a frog, I shall shout blessings of the machina! <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the frogs in the audience don't understand, like, they understand what you're saying because they speak frog, so as you shout out blessings of the machina, uh, a lot of them are, like, very confused and sort of, like, looking around, uh, sort of mouth agape, um, and just uh, a few of them like applaud, like, man, that's an impressive trick. That's a smart frog right there uh, as you're moving through. So that's pretty good. Uh, Lumon, what was your move again? I'm throwing the frog into the air as high as I can. Okay, uh, go ahead and make me a strength check. Uh, 
All right, yeah, the frog gets tossed up. Uh, everyone's kind of like laughing and cheering at this talking frog that's being tossed in the air. I don't even need to make a check. They just think that that's hilarious, uh, Isaac. Um, so yeah, you're throwing them not crazy high, but pretty good. Uh, and Armstrong and, and Trigger Kicks, what were you guys doing? Or oh, sorry, I just said Armstrong in my heart. <laughs> uh, I'm hefting him above my head and flexing <laughs> with, with, right. with a sparkle in my eye. Since he is like... <laughs> I too shall flex and try to match right. his pose. Uh, I think this is, uh, I'll let you choose charisma or strength here. I will go with strength. Or I actually, I, I could. With if I can. Right. Yeah, you can. I was going to say that you could pick also intelligence if you wanted to. Um, and uh, Alex. Uh, I'm going with strength. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and roll it up for me. All right. Just normal strength? Yep. Just raw strength. You just, you flex. Uh, I mean, it's impressive. Uh, the frog on your head also flexes. Uh, it's, it's it's pretty good. Um, as you, uh, it, you know, the pose isn't perfectly matched. It's not great. Um, people don't seem quite as into that one as they were on the last two. Um, but you get through uh, this round um, and uh, they begin kind of now the third and final round. Uh, as they go through, they start to, um, uh, which is just kind of like uh, it's just kind of like a talent competition where the frogs just show off whatever like prepared act that they have. Um, but as they get to this, they pick uh, they actually pick you and Snooty. Uh, Snooty and Chirurgix get chosen. Um, Lumine and uh, um, Lumine and. Uh, Isaac, you guys actually do not get picked for the final one. And you see that other Grung also doesn't get picked for the final one, that other Bollywog with the giant frog, uh, who looks absolutely furious. Uh, and you see he kind of like uh, walks over to the judge's booth uh, and he kind of starts making a little bit of a scene uh, as he's going, um, Excuse me, I have trained night and day. What about my performance was inadequate? What about my performance was inadequate? Uh, and uh, Julius Frogson kind of responds, I mean, your frogification was fine, but there was just uh, other frogs that we felt were more meritorious in their uh, effort. And you see as he's kind of like getting angrier and angrier, um, you watch as the frog that he was kind of training, um, he kind of like snaps his finger. Um, and, and he kind of starts to call out, well, what do you think of this? I'll show you the greatest frog. I'll show you the greatest frog to ever compete in the show. Uh, and uh, you watch as he snaps his finger, the frog starts to kind of like get a little bit bigger. Um, what do you guys want to do? It's impossible for a frog to square up. To what up? Square up. Uh, I guess I don't know what you mean by that, square up. Go I'm into a fighting to position. Him. Put up your uh, dukes, yes. good sir. Uh, yes, you put up your frog, uh, your webbed dukes, uh, and kind of are, are getting into a fighting position. For the record, anyone who know who wishes to stop being a frog can just take off the collar. I'll say that that's a free action uh, if you want to cease to be a frog at any time. I, uh, but for I'm now, you got your webbed dukes. I'm going to rip the collar off of Isaac. Um, do you let him do that, Isaac? Hmm... Perhaps. Actually, it's probably best that we weren't found to be in the competition because the man who <laughs> brought it in said so. Um, so, are you going to resist him taking the collar off, or are you just going to take the collar off? Well, if I resisted and failed, I suppose it would look rather bad. So, I shall allow it! Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, he reaches down and pulls the, pulls the collar off, uh, and you all of a sudden are revealed uh, as you become. Then you hear a, a collective gasp from the audience. Uh, and Snooty also oh, gasps oh, as an act. <laughs> yeah, make a just uh, make a performance check. I know you have advantage because no one's actually paying attention. <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very convincing, Snooty. Um, what about you, Trier Gix? What are you doing? Are you staying a frog? Or are you going to take off your collar? I will look to Snooty, and... I'm giving him a wink. <laughs> then I shall stay a frog. Uh, okay. Um, 
you watch as this frog and this kind of like angry bullywug trainer, um, the frog starts to get bigger and bigger, uh, and you watch as like it sprouts uh, on the top of its head, the eyes start to move up onto the top of its head, uh, and you see like a third eye actually appear, uh, and you watch as its two kind of front paws and out of its back kind of grows into uh, these large kind of strange uh, tentacle, uh, tentacle-like growths. Uh, as this giant frog appears, um, it seems to be a very small frog hemoth that has now appeared. Uh, and you watch as a lot of the uh, the judges, oh, jeez! Uh, Clinton Slaughter Murder just kind of like looks at what's going on uh, and just dis disapparates out of there. He just teleports away. Like, um, nah, man, I'm out. <laughs> just, just no thank you. Uh, the hag does likewise. Uh, and the two kings are starting to run away and you watch as guards are appearing in front of them. I'd like you all to roll for initiative. So be it. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to get this guy to also roll initiative. Uh, he's going to roll that again. Uh, three. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, the first to act is you, Lord Snooty, as this giant thing appears upon the scene, uh, and just... Uh, and the tentacles start to lash out. Uh, frogs fly about uh, as this thing kind of explodes into existence. Uh, and it becomes a very lively uh, West Marster dog show, a frog show for probably the first time ever. You would dare to sully the great name of this prestigious event. You shall suffer! As Snooty goes over, smacks him with, uh, we'll smack him with the K once and then do a flurry of blows. All right, go for it. Cane smack! Hits, for sure. And then two hits. Actually, both of those miss. Ah. Uh, you swing the cane around, it hits into the creature's kind of big, massive stomach. Uh, it leaves kind of a dent, and then your two punches that come in after, they just kind of like bounce off of some of the blubber uh, that this uh, frog hemoth is made of, which uh, it looks really ridiculous, honestly, um, as the tentacles are just kind of like wildly flailing about. Um, that is going to bring us to, um, that is going to bring us to you who are no longer a frog, Isaac. Hmm. Are there any frogs nearby aside from the one we're fighting? Um, Aside from the one you're fighting, there's the trainer uh, who's still there, kind of like looking at the big frog, as well as uh, all of the, I mean, the countless frogs that are spread out throughout the arena. Am I bigger than he is? Uh, bigger than the big frog? Uh, bigger so than the monster frog? Oh, um, the bullywug, you're about the same size. I shall sprint over to the other frog and, using both my arms, attempt to hurl myself up at the... What was it? The frog hemoth? Yes, uh, the miniature frog hemoth. Um, all right. Um, so you're trying to hurl yourself at it and, like, climb on top of it? Yes. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be an athletics check. Uh, 13, and it's going to be contested by uh, his athletics, because it's kind of like a grapple. Um, um, yeah, unfortunately not. You go to, like, run up and just kind of, like, climb up its back. Um, uh, it's, you go to climb up its back, but it just kind of, like, twists its body around and, and throws the, um, uh, and kind of throws you off, and you're just kind of stuck on the ground next to him. Um, that's Can probably... Unfortunately not, it is an action to uh, to try and uh, do something like a grapple. If you have a bonus action, you can still do that. I believe I do. Uh, what do you wish to do? Hmm. Kill it. Hmm. With fire, I preferably. I suppose I shall just uh, pop the bottle of my uh, Blessings of the Machina and attempt to dump it onto the frog. 
All right. Uh, I will say that that's trivial. Yeah, you take out your bottle of blessings of the Makita and splash it onto the frog, uh, which is now sort of uh, covered with the uh, the olive oil <laughs> that is the blessings of the Makita. Uh, anything else? I'm afraid not. Um, in that case, uh, that is going to bring us to uh, Lumineron. Uh, which I read there, but Lumine. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do? I'm going to power up my uh, my holy symbol, and I'm going to cast false life on myself. Um, all right. Uh, you imbue yourself with necrotic energy, uh, and you watch as uh, Lumine kind of has the sheen of magic that's glowing about, uh, glowing about her as uh, she's been strengthened. Uh, anything else on your turn? I'm gonna ready my uh, my shield and spear. All right, you take your shield and spear and place them out in front of you in a defensive position. Uh, that's going to, in that case, bring us to. Um, that's going to bring us to. Oathgrix. Chereer Grix. Oathgrix Chereer Grix. What do you want to do? I am not very well understanding of this frog form, but I will try to keep my the thought so uh, if you wish to um uh if you wish to like do you want to attack it as a frog or are you just going to uh just chill and just pretend to be afraid i shall attack it as a frog all right go ahead and make me the frog bite attack it's a little bit too big to uh swallow Um, that absolutely hits. You deal six points of damage uh, as this frog uh, now off the leash. I assume you let go of the leash, Snooty. As of it, course. Yeah, as it runs up and uh, bites on and you're now just uh, teeth kind of clamped on the bottom of its leg as the frog hemoth kind of uh, lets out kind of a strange uh, part rivet, part roar as it passes now to the frog hemoth's turn, I think. Um, which is going to look down at you, uh, who just bit, uh, who just bit it. Look at this. Um, actually, it's going to go after Snooty, I think, who did a lot of damage and is going to whip you with a tentacle. Uh, it does not have advantage. Does an 11 hit? No, it does not. Uh, it's going to whip you with a tentacle again. 17, I assume, does? That does, and it hurts quite a bit. You take 10 points of bludgeoning damage as a tentacle <laughs> uh, whips up and goes and tries to uh, wrap around you. Uh, and you are now kind of also grappled uh, by the creature. Um, and it's going to attempt to uh, bite at... Um, I think it's actually going to bite at you, Isaac. Uh, oh, it just rolled damage without the attack. That is very strange. No, I rolled the attack at 7. Oh, oh no, I rolled the attack. I just didn't see it. Crit fail! Um, it extremely misses. Uh, it goes down to bite at you beneath it, and it just kind of like... It hits the ground around you and pulls its mouth up. So for a second you were in its mouth, but I just like forgot to close it, and you are completely fine. <laughs> uh, this thing is obviously very dumb. You get that impression uh, as it passes now to. Um, I'm still inside uh, of its mouth. Um, or no, you're not inside of the mouth at all. You're good. Oh, um, wow. uh, as it passes now to Snooty. Can I hit while in a grapple, or do I have to get out of the grapple first? Nope. You can hit in a grapple if you want. You just can't move. That is fine. I shall hit it. That's cool. Nine, unfortunately, misses. How about that? Does hit. Eat it. Uh, and are you going to do? Are you going to do another one? Uh, no. Yes, actually, I will. Okay. Thirteen um, hit. Thirteen does hit. Um, you strike for 11 points of damage. The cane, you're jumbled up in the tentacle and it's a little bit hard to get a feel of it. But the, uh, a punch in an elbow just uh, in rapid succession and the, uh, the frog kind of uh, lets out another uh, roar of pain uh, as we go now to Lumine. Or, I know it was Isaac next. Isaac, what do you wish to do? All right. Is anyone friendly close to me? Stay within 15 feet. A lot of people are within 15 feet. Uh, you have the frog, you have uh, the frog that is uh, Oathgurt, and you have uh, and you have Snooty. Hmm. Well, Snooty, perhaps you should duck. 
Well, I would if I could. I shall cast burning hands upon the frog behemoth. It's large enough that you can aim it such that it's not going to affect uh, your allies. Uh, but it does succeed its dexterity saving throw, so it's going to take half damage. Uh, so go ahead and roll that damage, though. So that should... Uh, uh, 3d6. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, you watch as the fire <sighs> spreads out over the creature. It kind of dodges out of the way. Uh, but then you also see that oh man that is a rough i don't think i've like i don't cannot remember the last time i saw that happen um but you also see as the fire kind of oof, licks over the outside of the creature it also seems to have resistance to fire damage so it seems like that attack actually didn't hurt it at all um let's have to pay respect <laughs> um anything else on your turn i'm sorry that's rough man I'm afraid not. All right. In that case, it's going to be Lumine. Okay, can I attack it with my spear and also do a spell? Um, you can do one or the other, unfortunately. An attack and a spell are both actions, unless the spell is a bonus action. Okay. And I'll, a cantrip, I think. Um, okay. Well, no, it, 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 a cantrip. No, it's, you can only, a cantrip is an action unless it specifically says that it's a bonus action. Oh, okay. Okay, then I'll, I'll use my bonus action. I'll run up and hit it with uh, my spear. Um, all right, uh, go ahead and make me an attack roll. Uh, yeah, that definitely hits, roll damage. <laughs> you stab into it, the creature kind of leans back, the tentacles uh, flailing out to the side as you catch it right kind of in the soft belly of the creature uh, for four points of piercing damage. Uh, and then I'll cast, I'll cast uh, that. No, like I said, it's um, it has to be one or the other. It's those are both actions. Because uh, you see, chill touch where it says casting time one action. So I can't do a bonus action. You can do a bonus action. Yeah, no. but a bonus action is different from an action. So yeah. it would say casting time one bonus action, if um, okay. if it Fine. was a bonus action as well. Okay, uh, but you do stab into it with the spear, uh, and so now all of you are kind of like right up next to it. You're all just kind of surrounded around it, uh, beating it down. Uh, with your miscellaneous weapons, uh, as we pass now to uh, as we pass now to Odgerod, who you're still a frog. How tall uh, wanna... is this frog hemoth? Uh, it's pretty tall. Um, it's not like massive, but I would say it's uh, about fourteen or so feet tall. Can I choose to let go of its leg? Um, oh yeah, absolutely. I would like to move back, turn around, and attempt to hop onto the frog hemoth. Um, all right. Um, go ahead and make an athletics check um, with advantage because you can hop so high. It's not like, unlike for uh, Isaac, it's easy to climb on. You just gotta kind of, um, just gotta kind of hold on once you're up there. Uh, 22. Uh, it's gonna be this thing's uh, game to contest it, uh, which it fails. Uh, yeah, you climbed up to it, and you're now just uh, latched onto the frog's back. Um, and I'll actually not even going to take that as an action from you, because you have the ability to jump super high, so that's just your move action, I'll say. I shall um, attempt to bite down onto one of its eye stalks, or tentacles, or whatever I can reach. Okay, close. yeah, you go and try and <coughs> bite down with your frog mouth. Uh, you're very near an eye stalk, so go ahead and make an attack roll. Uh, 14 hits, you... <coughs> Uh, bite one of the eye stalks. You just kind of pull uh, and just uh, rip it straight off. Um, as you eat one of the frog hemoth's eyes, it lets out an absolutely uh, anguished howl. Uh, but it still has, still's got eyes to spare. Uh, uh, and you also deal four points of damage. Is that all for your turn? Yes. Um, all right. The frog hemoth does not like uh, that you are. Uh, the frog does not like that you are climbing on top of it, um, so it's going to try and um, it's going to try and uh, uh, I need you to make a strength saving throw. As uh, it's going to use its tongue on you, uh, you succeed. The tongue goes to coil around you. You feel it was going to try and pull you into its mouth, uh, but it fails to do so. Uh, and then 
uh, two more of the tentacles, not the one that's grabbing you, Snooty. Uh, one of them's going to attack Isaac, and one of them's going to attack... Um, that's, that one's against Isaac. Does an eight hit Isaac? He does not. And then against the nine. I don't think an eight hits anyone. <laughs> yes. I mean, you could have a penalty to dex, maybe? Um, and uh, Lumina, 22, I assume, does hit for nine points of bludgeoning damage. Yeah. The tentacle <laughs> curls and wraps around you. Uh, you are also <laughs> restrained and bound by this uh, giant frog monster. As it passes to the top of the initiative, which is Snooty. Well, we'll see how this treats you. Ten more damage. All right. Um, the cane comes around, the hand comes around. Uh, Snooty's in his element, just beaten down on this big giant frog. Uh, the trainer in the distance is looking on in something in between. It's a strange mix of horror, satisfaction, and glee uh, as he watches his monstrosity do what it's doing. Uh, as it passes now to Isaac. What do you wish to do? The monster's mouth open. Uh, the monster's mouth is, is decidedly open. And the trainer, how strong does he look? He looks like a regular bullywug. Can I pick him up and throw him into the mouth? Uh, that's gonna be, um, difficult, and it's gonna provoke an opportunity attack as you move away from the creature. I shall not. I uh, will use it a my generic mace of death. Oh yes, I forgot. Um, all right, go ahead and make an attack with your uh, generic <laughs> mace of death. 13 hits, roll damage on that. Right. For eight points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, you smack with the mace. Um, it strikes, the creature's starting to look a little bit beat up. Um, but I think that's all for your turn then. Um, oh, wait, did someone take damage? I did. Uh, yeah, I as has mine. Oh, thank goodness. Excellent. Um, you call upon the Machina to heal your ally. Uh, you feel as some of your wounds kind of uh, quickly close over, uh, in particular some of like the breaks on the inside of the body where the tentacle was trying to crush you. Um, 1d4 plus a spellcasting modifier. Yeah, a, d a d4 plus uh, whatever that modifier is. Uh, and while you're rolling that, we will just go ahead and pass right on to Lumine. Uh, Lumine, what do you want to do? You're also kind of stuck in place by this tentacle. I'm going to cast command and tell it, uh, tell the frog to grovel. Um, all right, you're going to use command to grovel on the frog. Uh, it's going to make a wisdom saving throw, yes? Yes. Uh, it definitely fails. Uh, and you watch as this, um, <laughs> um, you watch as this creature uh, will on uh, on its turn it will do the thing that you told it to do uh, so what will happen when the next time it takes its turn it will spend its turn falling onto the ground uh, but right now the frog is just very fixated close on Lumine as it watches uh, in sort of abject horror uh, it's about to do some groveling uh, as it passes now to Ogre I have two questions Yes, please. In the form of a frog, can I still psych myself up to potentially enter a, a state of rage? Um, absolutely, you can rage while a frog. If I attack this large frog, would that mess with command? Um, no. It's on the ground, so it takes a... Everything's advantage against it, right? Um, uh, and it's, it's still standing up. On its turn, it will fall down. So this one will be a regular. Okay. I shall um, make use of the fruits of my time spent in meditation and self-learning, and I shall enter a frenzied oh man. rage. Oh, man. You go into a frenzied rage as a frog. <laughs> Uh, and you lose, uh, what is it? I feel like that sounds a lot like is kind of the sound that I'm in my brain at least imagining. Uh, go ahead and make me two attacks, I assume. Uh, I or cannot actually, it's a bonus turn. I was going to say it's a bonus action. Go ahead and so make me your attack with rage. Uh, your frog bite. 
So that deals an extra two piercing damage uh, as you bite down, uh, taking another huge chunk out of the top of the frog hemoth's head. Um, yum, yum, yum. And it goes to the frog hemoth's turn, which you watch the frog hemoth um, just by <sighs> the force, uh, just uh, leans over and leans on the ground. You watch the tentacles just kind of throw themselves to their side. They're still coiled around you. It doesn't let go. Um, <laughs> but it now lays down, uh, and that's all it can do. Uh, commands very good uh, as it passes now to uh, the top of the initiative which is you uh, you will once again attack. attack you have advantage on on these attacks because it is now prone all right then the first one uh, hits with a crit um well the, we'll just do the martial arts as the crit because you already crit on it and just roll against right. the cane because right. it's already there uh, so 15 so 7 um I'll give you the uh, I'll give you the new damage. Uh, so nine plus seven, sixteen damage. <laughs> the cane cracks. The punch hits. The uh, the, the non-moving target is becoming a lot easier to hit uh, as you have this uh, extra bonus. Uh, that is going to, I think, in that case, bring us to Isaac. The creature is prone before you. What do you wish to do? Hmm. I shall shoot it with my light crossbow. Do so. Um, actually, attacks against, well, that misses anyway, it didn't, didn't end up matter. Uh, so you, uh, pull back your crossbow, um, and the bolt just kind of, uh, the skin is slippery, and it just seems to kind of, like, slide across where you thought it was gonna, uh, pierce in, so unfortunately you miss. Um, he actually rolled like crossbow twice. Oh. Oh. Weird. Never mind, you hit with a 17. Go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> That is very strange. Um, it rolled damage I'll again twice too. Seven, seven points of piercing damage uh, as you, the crossbow bolt just stabs in. I don't know why that happened. Um, yeah, the frog is looking pretty beat up at this point. It gets back to you, Lumine. What do you want to do? I'll cast Ray of Sickness. Uh, it's going to make a constitution saving throw. Those it's pretty good at. Um, or actually have to roll an attack for that to begin with. Um, so roll a d20 and add five, probably, is, is what your spellcasting attack bonus yes. is. Um, 17 definitely hits, um, and it succeeds the constitution saving throw, so it's not poison, but it does take the 2d8 poison damage. So go ahead and roll that 2d8 damage. 15 points of poisoning damage. You watch the poison uh, lashes out. It sounds like you breathed that one, is that fair to say? Yes! <laughs> uh, you just <sighs> poison emanates uh, from Lumine's mouth on this creature that's uh, that's kind of groveling before her, and, and as uh, as it does so, um, <sighs> uh, the creature just kind of you watch its skin kind of bubbles and burns, uh, and it falls over. <sighs> um, it, it just kind of its eyes kind of roll back in its head, uh, and the frog hemoth hath been slain. Uh, with Lumines, uh, with Lumines attack here, um, as it gets back, the trainer. <laughs> uh, you walk over and punch the trainer. Uh, the trainer uh, absolutely gets hit. They're hit aghast that their creation was not able to floor the entire room. Um, and at this point, um, you kind Literally of will dust himself off, stand tall, yeah. and pose again. <laughs> Yes, you strike another dramatic pose. Uh, I as the uh, boy stands and pose too. As the band, uh, the band kind of strikes up once more with the same theme that they played for the uh, for the judges as they entered, but now playing for you. Uh, as actual uproarious applause happens in the arena, uh, and you watch as uh, Frog and Hoppen and Julius Frogston kind of return uh, to the judges' table, uh, and and Frogston kind of calls out. I believe that it is without questification that uh, one frog that is hereified today uh, will, that that individual has shown that that frog is the frogliest of frogs in the land. Uh, and Frog and Hoppin, I concur! That frog is the greatest frog to ever done, and for heroism and bravery, the winner of the Westmarshire Frog Show is... Uh, and. Uh, they point at you. Uh, they point at you, Oathgerert, in this moment. Blessings of the Martin unto you all. I shall. 
We have and done it! I shall wave my uh, blessings of the Machina in the air frantically. <laughs> All right, yeah, you wave your, uh, you wave your blessings, um, Snooty and um, uh, Snooty and Oathgerert. You are prompted to take another lap around the arena, kind of a victory lap, uh, as you know, various like the people are throwing like dead flies and stuff at you which is kind of the equivalent of roses here, as frogs are supposed to like those. Uh, I don't know if you eat any of those, Oathgarut. I am still wanting to bite onto something, so the flies are better than nothing. Yes, and in the rage, and actually as a frog, they even taste good to your palate, and you're just uff, uff, destroying frogs as you're kind of coming out of this incredible rage, uh, and uh, you, uh, Lumine, are kind of reveling in your kill as... Uh, I think that is uh, yes. gonna do it for this adventure. You've all succeeded and earned 100 Bartholomew bucks each, as well as one experience point. Uh, and I'd like to thank you all very much for participating in our first adventure tonight. The Victorian Team family would be proud. <laughs> uh, and to the audience, of the Machina. Jeremy, are you here? Oh, I'm not here, but Pharaoh Fracken happens here. Good job, everybody. Fragging happen. Why, well, thank you very much. That was some pretty impressive fragmentship. But for now, we're going to have to head out because we got another show going on. <laughs>